and Eastern on American History TV on C-SPAN 3, working with our cable affiliates as we explore America. And we take you live now to Morgantown, West Virginia, here on C-SPAN, for a debate between U.S. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat, and his Republican challenger, Patrick Morrissey. Welcome to the West Virginia Broadcasters Association U.S. Senatorial Debate between Democratic Senator Joe Manchin and his Republican challenger, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. I'm Hoppy Kirchhoff, your moderator for this evening. The West Virginia Broadcasters Association, comprised of television and radio stations across the state, is proud to bring this debate to all of West Virginia tonight. And we thank AT&T for sponsoring the event. We'll do our best this evening to explore issues important to West Virginia while providing you with a clear picture of where each candidate stands. Now is the time for details and specifics, accountability for statements the candidates have made and positions they have taken or in some cases not taken. My questions are designed to elicit these answers. Here's the format. Senator Manchin will receive the first question, have 90 seconds to respond. Candidate Morrissey, Attorney General Morrissey, will have 30 seconds for rebuttal. And then we'll alternate questions for the next 48 minutes and proceed to the closing statements by the candidates with Attorney General Morrissey closing last. By agreement of the candidates, I have the latitude to seek clarification from them and also the latitude to, in some instances, allow a very limited response to the rebuttal. But we have less than an hour and a lot of ground to cover, so I'm really going to try to move things along tonight. Senator Manchin, Attorney General Morrissey, welcome to you both. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Hoppy. Thank you. Sure. Senator Manchin, first question to you. We had a horrible tragedy last weekend in Pittsburgh. Eleven mm -hmm. people murdered at right. the synagogue. The week before, a man sent pipe bombs to leading Democrats. That's prompted debate about the tone of political rhetoric in this country. This campaign has been acrimonious. Each of you has called the other <clears throat> a liar at times. Advertisements on behalf of each of you have said some very vicious things. Rabbi Jeffrey Myers at the memorial service in Pittsburgh last weekend called on politicians to lead the way to avoid hateful rhetoric. Two-part question. Do you believe that the overall tone of the public debate in this country contributes to violence? And if so, would you be willing to tone it down in the final days of the campaign and call on your supporters to be more respectful? Well, first of all, Hoppy, I want to send my prayers and condolences to all the families who've lost loved ones in that horrible tragedy and the people that basically were targeted in the bombing uh, mailing. It's just awful. I mean, this is who, who are we as, as a people? Who are we as West Virginians and who are we as Americans? It doesn't set a good example. The tone needs to be tamped down. Uh, from the leader of our, of our free country and the leader of the free world, basically, President Trump, on down to each one of us as elected officials. Uh, we can have civil debates. I'm hoping that's what is a very informative, educational civil debate. That's what we should be doing. But we set an example. You set an example in your house. If your children are watching, they're going to basically do what you do or think it's okay and condone it. Uh, and uh, that's what's happening. And the, the words mean something. With that being said, people believe it's okay to attack and say anything you want to. And uh, I hope that that changes. I would hope that the president would tone down the rhetoric. I hope that he would tone down the tweets. And the president is our president. Whether you voted for him or not, he's the president of the United States. I want him to succeed and do well. And I want to help him do that. And I stand up and, and I support him when it's good for West Virginia. And when it's not, uh, I stand up to him. And I think that's what it takes. But uh, he leads that, uh, that exam by example. And I think we need to do the same. Attorney General Morrissey. Well, Hoppy, I think it's a great question. And first, I want to start out by thanking you for hosting the debate and the broadcasters. This is the first opportunity. Finally, we have a chance to debate, and I welcome that. I think to start to answer your question, I would say we always have to, as candidates for office, reject violence in all forms. We have to reject anti-Semitism. And when I start seeing the finger pointing that went on after last weekend, to me, that's crass. That has to come to an end. That's not a Republican or a Democratic position. But there are clear differences in this campaign for U.S. Senate, and I'm very appreciative for the opportunity to talk about them tonight. I think that President Trump has been doing very positive things for America and for the state of West Virginia. 
he really is making West Virginia great again and West Virginia great again. If you look at what he's been doing over the last number of years, he's been cutting taxes. He's been standing up for conservative values. The United States is now being better respected around the world. Very positive. He's going to come in and talk about all those things at the rally for me tomorrow. Okay. President Trump has supported my candidacy in contrast to Senator Manchin because Senator Manchin supported Hillary Clinton when it really mattered most and all of the dishonest ways of Washington. We're and gonna, that's, I think, you're going to see those uh, differences We're going to get to that in a minute. Let's continue on this theme, though. After the violence at the white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, President Trump said there were fine people on both sides and that both sides were to blame for the violence. He also said after the Pittsburgh shooting that, and this is a quote, the fake news is doing everything in their power to blame Republicans, conservatives, and me for the division that has been going on for far too long in this country. He called the caravan of Central Americans heading through Mexico an invasion. That's his word, invasion. Shepard Smith of Fox News said, there is no invasion. Do you support the president's use of this kind of language? And do you believe, as the president does, that the media are the real problem in this country? Well, I think this president's been doing the right thing to call out some of the politically incorrect things that have been going on for a long period of time. And specifically with respect to immigration, one of the things the president's going to come and talk about tomorrow at the rally are the clear differences between my campaign, which is focusing on closing the open borders, ending the amnesty, building that wall, versus Senator Manchin who supported Hillary Clinton for president. And in his world, we'd have open borders, we'd have amnesty, we'd have sanctuary cities. Okay, Those I are critical things that we have to talk about. That's why the president knows that this West Virginia race is so let, critical. Let me, let me do a clarification yes, in rebuttal. So please. clarification is, so do you support the language used by the president at times, which Manchin says is inflammatory? Look, no one is an ideological twin and says the same words as someone else. But this president is absolutely right that we have to close our borders and it's diametrically opposed to Hillary Clinton and Senator Manchin, unfortunately, is a dishonest Washington liberal because all you're seeing on the issues that matter I'll is be, he I says one thing in West Virginia well, you know, and then separately votes an another answer. way well, wait, that, that was a question, so let's get the re rebuttal now from Senator Manchin. 30-second rebuttal. Well, you're never going to get an answer. So basically with a 30-second rebuttal, I have voted every time to support uh, the border as far as uh, securing the borders. I have voted every time and will continue to vote every time. I think the president needs to use every means possible to him. And I've also said that we have to tone down the rhetoric. All of us are responsible, Democrats and Republicans. Quit acting like you belong to some tribe. Start acting like you belong to the American tribe. We worked things out. When I was governor, we always worked together. We came together with our differences. We never blamed anybody. We addressed our problems and worked together for the betterment of West Virginia. Now we're seeing it's, it's okay to divide. So instead of the United right. States, it's almost a divided state. Okay, we're going to go now, Senator Manchin, a question for you. West Virginia voters are deciding whether to amend the state constitution yeah. to nullify the 1993 West Virginia Supreme Court decision that allowed state funding, taxpayer dollars, to be used to pay for elective abortions for women who qualified for Medicaid. Attorney General Morrissey supports that amendment. Do you support or oppose that amendment? Hoppy, I was born pro-life family, into a pro-life family. I was raised pro-life, and I have always voted pro-life my entire public career, with the exceptions of the life of the mother, rape and incest. I've been very clear about that. And the Republican legislature had a chance to fix this and make it right. They had a chance to fix it and basically put in case of uh, the life of the mother, rape or incest. They decided to make it political. They decided to make it political with the help of uh, Patrick Morsey. And only thing I've said, if those exclusions are not in there, it is not something that we should be voting on. It should be something that we should be working so the pro-life Democrats, pro-life Republicans that believe that I do, that it's reasonable to have the exceptions for the life of the mother, incest, and rape. But there, okay, but there is an amendment to vote on. Will you vote for or against the amendment that amendment? The amendment does not have, if it doesn't have that in there, no. But the, So you will vote against the amendment? If it has... If, if it doesn't as, have as the, incest, as, the, as the amendment stands as now, amendment you stands are against now the amendment. Because it does not have the exceptions of incest, okay, you're rape, and the life of the mother. You're against the amendments. Which uh, most pro-life West Virginians agree with. Attorney General Morsi. So this is another example of what you get when you have a dishonest Washington liberal <laughs> who's talking about an issue. First of all, I'm clearly for Amendment 1. I can state that very clearly. I oppose taxpayer funding of abortion. But if you look at the amendment and you go into the underlying details, and those details matter, there are exceptions that are provided for. So I think that Senator Manchin is not correct in terms of his reading of the law. And 
This emphasizes his position on abortion. He's been on both sides of pro-life issues, supported Planned Parenthood funding, and supported Hillary Clinton, the most radical pro-abortion okay. candidate in America. Let's, That's a big difference between the two candidates let me, here. Let me, let me go. I'm going to go yeah. to the next question. Um, Attorney General Morrissey, your past work record on behalf of the pharmaceutical industry has been well documented. You've received tens of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions from that industry. Last October, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee filed a freedom of information request to obtain public records from your office communications with opioid manufacturers. Last week, a judge ordered you to immediately begin supplying that information, and the judge said, and this is a quote from the judge, the fact that those records, a year after they've been sought, still have not been fully responded to as evidence and proof of the blatant disregard of the West Virginia Attorney General as a custodian of records, obligations, and duties. Why have you not fully complied, and why shouldn't your reluctance raise questions about your connections to the pharmaceutical industry? Well, Hoppy, I'm glad you asked that question because we have complied. If you look at the request that came in from the Democrat Senate Committee, the very arm that's spending millions of dollars for Senator Manchin, they did one of these unbelievable fishing expedition requests asking for literally over 100,000 documents from 460 people. We fulfilled. We were working diligently to get back to them. We got everything back to them. Even now, we've gotten all the information that they are required under the law. We're doing everything right. But what this does, it shows the politicization of this opioid issue. And unfortunately, Senator Manchin has really failed on that issue. When he was governor, opioid debts doubled. And separately, Senator Manchin has not been a very good, effective leader with respect to tackling opioid abuse. My record on that is very strong. We've taken on that problem, record-breaking settlements. We've gone after the root causes of the epidemic. I sued the DEA, forced a massive change in the national drug quota system that was responsible for spitting hundreds of millions of excess pills into West Virginia. What did Senator Manchin do? He actually voted for a weakening amendment to the DEA enforcement policies. And even, it's a quote people could look at, that it would make the opioid epidemic worse. My actions are fighting to protect people from this opioid epidemic. Senator Manchin, unfortunately, you know, he's aligned with Hillary Clinton. Barack <laughs> Obama didn't do very much on the opioid epidemic either. I think there's a big difference on this issue. We've been effective. Uh, he is not. Yeah. Let's get a rebuttal. There's only one person that's made money from pills coming to West Virginia, and he's sitting right here, Patrick Morrissey. His lobbying firm, he's operated and basically made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars from the Morrissey lobbying firm. He continues to reap benefits from that. Sending pills, millions of pills. He talks about the types of deals he made, record-breaking. We got $1.8 billion from tobacco settlement, $1.8 billion. He thinks $20 million from, uh, uh, from Cardinal Health, who he used to work for. He thinks basically McKesson. He wants to make a deal with McKesson, which would be a horrible deal. The state of West Virginia, Hoppy, please let me if I can. Because Real this quick, because i got a, a question related to that. The state, the state pays $77 million a year, basically for incarceration, and $291 million a year to take care of families because of addiction. Let, 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 That's let me, $368 million, and he wants to settle for $20 million? Hoppy, if one I can, time to rebut, this I is think important. You, you, you can, because my next question is about that. So there's going to be a chance to rebut. But I want to start here sure. with this question. And, Senator, last week you held a news conference. You alleged that Attorney General Morrissey negotiated a settlement of $35 million with the pharmaceutical and medical supply company McKesson for flooding the state with prescription opioids. Morrissey recused himself from that suit and has not been involved in the negotiations. Two parts. Did you make a false statement? And second, a $35 million settlement would be by far the largest of any drug company settlement. Why wouldn't that be a victory for the state? First of all, it would be a horrible deal for the state of West Virginia. And I was able to, to stop Patrick Morrissey from making a horrible deal for the state of West Virginia. I just said... $368 million a year just for the pills that come in. It cost the people of West Virginia to incarcerate and take families that have been dis dis disrupted. He wants to make a one-time deal. We got $1.8 billion, Hoppy, $1.8 for, for tobacco. And he wants to make it look as if this is a great deal. And I've said before, this is the only man that's profited from pills coming to West Virginia. And he's supposed to be saying, okay, McKesson, I'm going to recuse myself after he was removed from the case. And he knows by me stopping by me bringing that up and stopping it. And then McKesson had a board meeting on Thursday. In that board meeting, they told their shareholders from basically the $34 million would be taken from the earnings for that quarter because of setting aside for settlements. 
Now, he knows it. I know it. Sitting here, he won't admit to it, but he knows it's true. All right, let's get a rebuttal. Well, a couple things. One, Hoppy, and if I want to really address this. Part of the reason President Trump is coming back tomorrow to rally for my campaign is because he knows that everything you just heard is part of that whole Hillary Clinton lie, say anything you want. It's documented that Senator Manchin is lying about this issue, but it's no different than what we used to see from Hillary Clinton, the radical Democrats, and in fact, all the people you saw on full display in the fall, the obstruct, resist, impeach team, he's just pushing information out to hide his bad record. He's the largest recipient of Mylan pharmaceutical cash, and they're the, a large maker of opioids, EpiPen, yes. and Senator Manchin defends them. What That's they, outrageous. EpiPens is coming up. Uh, Attorney General Morrissey, currently the federal government is prohibited by law from negotiating drug prices to bring down the cost of the billions of dollars of drugs purchased every year in Medicare Part D. You're credited with helping to write the Medicare Modernization Act of 2003. In fact, when you ran for attorney general, there was an ad that said you drafted Medicare and Medicaid laws. So you're credited with drafting that law that included that prohibition and thus cost Medicare billions of dollars. What was your rationale for that? And why shouldn't the government be able to negotiate those drug prices? Hoppy, I want to make sure that West Virginians have the lowest drug prices possible. You know the best way to do that? It's to have competition. It's not to allow the government to decide which drugs are on the formulary and which ones are not. So in that law and everything I do, I'm going to make sure there's rigorous competition. We're going to move to generics quicker and quicker, and that's what that law did. And then West Virginians benefit tremendously. They did under that law. Now, I'm going to note that's in dramatic contrast to what Senator Manchin has done, because when he allied with Milan, taking hundreds of thousands of their cash, he defended them when EpiPen went up. 100% to 600%. And remember, his daughter is the CEO of EpiPen. That's outrageous. If there's anyone who should be worried about the high price of prescription drugs, it's Senator Manchin for so, defending the system. So, I try to change it for competition. So, so the government should not be able to negotiate with the drug companies on drug prices, the on Medicare drug prices. The government should get the best possible price, and you do that most effectively through robust comp competition. But not by changing the law and negotiating. By accelerating uh, competition and okay. making sure that generics come on earlier. That's the best way to do it. We it's, looked it's, at every model. We don't want the government in our medicine cabinet. Okay, we went over because I asked an additional question. Senator Manchin, your oh, rebuttal there. Oh, certainly I want to rebut on that. First of all, you're talking to the person right here that you said wrote and is responsible for the law of Medicare Part D. It basically prohibits, it prohibits Medicare from negotiating. He's profited by that. He also basically, if he wants to have competition, I voted to allow drugs to be purchased from Canada. It's much cheaper. I don't think that he has done that. And I think that his lobbying firm, the Morrissey lobbying firm, lobbies against that. Everything that it takes to reduce drug prices, to basically keep pills out of West Virginia, he's profited by. Let's, and let, he knows that. Hoppy, 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 Okay, the next question continues on this theme. You can rebut there. Senator Manchin, in 2016, Mylan Pharmaceuticals became embroiled in a controversy after the cost of the life-saving EpiPen had shot up 500 percent in just a few years. Your daughter, Heather Bresch, Mylan's CEO, was grilled on Capitol Hill for that price spike. You defended her and said the attacks on her salary of $19 million were, quote-unquote, sensational. Records show Milan employees and executives have contributed over $180,000 to your campaign. You also said the real problem was the convoluted system that drove up the price. Why, Senator, was Manchin justified, why was Milan justified in charging $600 for a two-pack of life-saving drugs that cost about $20 to $30 to make? First of all, Hoppy, the system is broken. It has been broken. Patrick Morrissey helped break it because he profits more from it being broken than fixing it. Next of all, I can't tell you on a publicly traded company how they operate, how they bring products to market, how they price products. I have no idea on that. What I can tell you is when it comes time to try to get lower prices and competition, as he's talked about, which he won't support, is bringing and being able to buy drugs from, from Canada. You're able to basically negotiate Medicare pricing, that you're gouging people on Medicare and paying high pharmaceutical prices. He benefits by that. He will not say he operates and supports that. The only person that's made a direct paycheck, that's made money from the pharmaceutical industry, not from campaign donations, because that goes into campaign, but money that you put in your pocket, money that you're able to buy things and do things with, is Patrick Morsey. The Morsey family firm has made millions of dollars 
doing exactly what we're sitting here talking about that's destroying West Virginia. And he won't own up to it. Well, That's I, what we're I, dealing with. Right, and I'll, and I'll be, give me a little bit more time here because you've given well, me a few questions. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, if you can, I think this is just another example when you have a dishonest Washington liberal in Senator Manchin, and he says one thing, but the facts are opposite. He's operating in Hillary Clinton's universe, making all the facts up. Everything he said is provably false. Now, let's look at the real record. Senator Manchin said he was open-minded to the single-payer idea of Bernie Sanders and to Hillary uh, Clinton. Now, you know what that would do for West Virginia? This is a $32 trillion health care package. That's the direction he wants to go on, on health care, hang on, Hoppy, and on drug prices. You know what that would mean? Yeah, Double me, of your taxes, less competition, Hoppy, is, government taking over every aspect of health care. We don't need I tell that. You what, this, this, President this, Trump is supportive you know, of this affordable is, health care. This is a Here's hot, it, this is, wait, this, wait, wait, this, is a hot, this is a hot no. issue. I'm going to give each of you a quick comment just to kind of yeah, resolve this and move Hoppy, on. Take a quick comment that, and a quick comment. First of all, there's no way I support a single-payer system. I said we should evaluate evaluate all systems. Look at everything if you're trying to make sure people have adequate access to health care. He's pre-existing condition. All he wants to do is throw 800,000 West Virginians, basically life or death, and he has a suit, he's, and he's doubling down on that. And basically, he wants it, to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which 80 percent of the people f benefit okay. by in West Virginia. And the fix we have for 20 percent, his buddy Mitch McConnell will not bring it to all the right, Attorney General Morrissey, get, get something in here, then we're going to move on. Go couple, ahead. A couple things. First of all, President Trump supports affordable health care options, high quality. Senator Manchin is in the opposite position. That Sanders approach that he's open to is very much in the direction of not only doubling your taxes, but in terms of allowing government to run roughshod over every aspect of your life. Senator Manchin not only is directly benefited, but he's been working to defend the family interests. He said as the Morrissey firm, he knows that's not true, but he has people been hawking to make money for his family on the, pharmaceuticals. I tell you what, we're going to we're, we're going to continue on this theme because this is very important. Yeah. And, and Patrick, this question's for you. Uh, Senator Manchin has criticized you for signing onto the lawsuit uh, by 20 Republican state attorney general that calls for what's left of the Affordable Care Act to be overturned as unconstitutional. The senator says that will lead to the loss of protections for people with pre-existing conditions and threaten expanded Medicaid coverage. Mr. Marcy, would, would you concede that if the lawsuit that you are a party to is successful, that immediately those protections with people with pre-existing conditions would be lost at that moment, and also that those with expanded Medicare, their coverage would be lost as well? Would you concede that point? No. In fact, Hoppy, we filed the suit. The suit is to get rid of Obamacare, but the judge would ultimately determine what the remedies are. So this is another example of the misinformation that you see from the Hillary Clinton, the Pelosi, and the Schumer team, because... They have a problem. People know. I want to look everyone in the eye tonight and tell them, I support protecting people with pre-existing conditions. That's critical. But what Senator Manchin is doing is he's trying to disguise his support for Obamacare. He won't change it. Meanwhile, premiums are skyrocketing 160 percent over four years. And their real goal is to get to Hillary Care, which Senator Manchin supports. That open-mindedness, which would bankrupt their country, is the wrong direction. Big difference on health care between us, but we're not going to uh, ever allow people with pre-existing conditions. You don't need Obamacare to protect people with pre-existing conditions. Hoppe, you know, you know, your first of all, you know what his friends and the Republicans put on that after my bill that I was trying to make sure that we intervene to stop him from throwing 800,000 West Virginians off? Make no mistake about it. They would be out. They would be out in the street and it'd be a life and death matter. Their remedy for this was says, oh, yeah, we're going to protect you from pre-existing conditions, only except we won't protect the disease you've had. So if you had cancer, we'll take care of the rest of your body. But if cancer comes back, we're not taking care of it. That's how cynical this is, what they want to do. Just drop your lawsuit, Patrick. If you drop your lawsuit, we're good. All right, let's go. We're going to We're going to Copy up, please. We're rebuttal. You never get it. Copy if you can, please. Let me do this. The next question is along the same lines. There's a rebuttal there. But then you're going to go to him first. No, Well, it's his question, but you have rebuttal. I'll give you a little time here. Senator Manchin, you've said there are parts of Affordable Care Act you like and parts you don't like. You were not in the Senate when the bill was passed in right. 2009. You've had eight years to think about it. If you had a vote, would you have voted for or against Obamacare? Let me put it this way. When a we yes or no. No, it's not a yes or no. Because it is. When it's John a yes McCain, or no. If, 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 would you have voted for oh, or against I would have voted no. It's the way you it came out with the mandate. No. Hold on. Let me explain. Okay. 
basically demanded. I told him when, when Max Bacchus called me, I was head of the Governor's Association. I says, Max, you tell me you've got to force them to buy one type of a product. If you don't buy it, you're going to find them. That won't work in West Virginia. Give us product mix. But you can't. You've got to take care of people with pre-existing condition. He could care less about that. He wants to throw them off. He votes over and over again to repeal and throw them off. We basically, when John McCain walked out and did this, a true patriot, he basically didn't say it was a best bill, it was a perfect bill. He said the process is not working. We can fix it. Mitch McConnell's had on his desk a bill modeled after Alaska, reinsurance program that we reduced policy, uh, reduced basically people's premiums 20 to 40 percent overnight. It's been there since July when we worked on it. Democrats and Republicans, Lamar Alexander leading Republicans and Democrats by Patty Murray, 24 of us signed the bill. It sits on Mitch McConnell's desk because you know what happens? The person he's pledged his allegiance to basically don't want to fix anything because you can't blame anybody. 80% of West Virginia's benefit for the first time. Seniors are getting, getting care. For the first time, you've got people with opiate addiction getting services for the first time in treatment and also people with mental illness. This has never happened in West Virginia, and we've not tried to teach anyone how to be preventive in using their health care. We can educate them and teach them. He doesn't want to do that. Every time and time he professes, repeal, repeal, repeal. And right, then basically right. files right, a lawsuit. Gladly files a lawsuit, 800,000 people. Okay, be let's, we, off. we got the point. Let's get a rebuttal. Okay, Hoppy, as you know, everything he said is false. And the reason why is because he's in this whole mindset. Hillary Clinton and what Senator Manchin did, he went to Washington. He became just a dishonest Washington liberal. He thinks, like Hillary did, you could just make up things as you go along. The fact is, on health care, like every issue, Senator Manchin's on all sides of every issue. He's either for Obamacare than against Obamacare. He's for Planned Parity, he's against Planned Parity. He's for the Second Amendment, he's against the Second Amendment. He said he was, you know, open to Donald Trump, but when the key judgment okay. came in 2016, he said no to Donald Trump. I'm a conservative fighter for President Trump. He made his bed with uh, Hillary Clinton, okay. and that's bad for West Virginia. I think All right, let me go. Hillary but, Clinton's not on the ballot. Joe uh, Manchin and Pat Morrissey. Pat, I'm right here. Senator Manchin knows that when you think of Hillary Clinton, that was the decision. Every it's, issue. Imagine, oh Hoppy, what that, would happen. That, 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 we wouldn't have yourself. judges. We wouldn't have Trump tax cuts. We would have open right, borders. We're going to get to that. We have questions demand. related to all that. Attorney General yeah. Morris, your home county is Jefferson County. Yeah. There's a huge fight going on there over the Rockwell plant yeah. that is under construction that will make fiber-based insulation. Supporters say the $150 million investment is a boon to the economy. Opponents say the plant will hurt the environment and is not the type of development people want there. You told me on TalkLine you would have an announcement prior to the election on your position. Well, it's almost Election Day, so please tell us now whether you, as someone who has a home in Jefferson County, support or oppose the Rockwell plant. So, Hoppy, I was very clear on your show when I said we're going to keep looking to get to the bottom. But we're still doing that. You know why? Because we still need to have meetings with the State Department of Environmental Protection. I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to actually use this issue to ride both sides of the fence like Senator Manchin does. That's what a dishonest Washington liberal does. You know what they do, Hoppy? They actually take a position like Senator Manchin did, which means he went to the groundbreaking, and now he's backing away and probably will be on the other side of the issue right now. When I give you an answer, I'm going to be straightforward, and I'm still getting to the bottom of it because we need to consult with the DEP. I will tell everyone this much, Hoppy. When you look at the Rockwell issue, you have to make sure that they're dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. Jefferson County is a farming community. You grew up there. We know it's a special place. We can't allow things to come in which will ruin the character of the community. But we also have to do it right. Well, Bobby, let, me just, no, wait, 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 let him finish. Let him finish. And you'll get a chance to respond. But I, I just want to try this. So you, you are not able to say tonight whether you support or oppose the plant. Will you, will you say, because this is a huge issue in your home county, will you say for or against before actual election day? Hoppy, I'm working to get to the bottom of it because unlike Senator Manchin, who flip-flops on every issue, when I say something, I mean it. That's why people know why President Trump's coming in to help me tomorrow for the rally. He knows I'm a conservative fighter. When I say something, like I'm pro-life, pro-Second right. Amendment, pro-coal, I mean it. Okay, and let, I me don't get a, let me get a, let me get a response from Senator Manchin. Let me just first of all say in a civil discourse, in West Virginia, as West Virginians, we don't attack people and call them liars, dishonest. I don't think Patrick's lying. 
I don't think he's dishonest. I think he's confusing. He doesn't understand West Virginia because he hasn't been here that long. I understand that. It's hard for him to understand our ways. We can be civil without calling people names. On the Rockwell situation, I went to the opening. I go to any opening I'm invited to if there's going to be new jobs and opportunity. There was not one word of dissent. After all that happened, we went to the groundbreaking. Then we start hearing in our office about the scent people had. It was concerning. So what I did immediately, tried to get everybody together, okay. Hop. No, I tried to get everybody together, and I said, bring all sides together. Let's get to the crux Do you support crux or side. oppose? Hold on. Let me get to it, Hoppy, Real quick. we got 30 seconds no, on No, no. What we do, what we support, let me tell you what I'm doing. I've sent two letters to EPA. You've got to get the EPA there. You've got to get the DEP here. All people supporting. If it's going to be harmful to the children... If it's going to be harmful but you can't to the children, say, you can't say you can't, now whether you support or oppose. You don't know basically why they gave him the permits. Did they cross all the T's, dot all the dice? Okay, and when you know, me, uh, Hoppy, okay, you can. Well, if it's well, going well, to be not, detrimental. Neither one of you is prepared to say tonight whether you support or oppose the Rockwell plan. We don't have the facts. Well, there's a big do. difference between us. Senator Manchin goes to the groundbreaking, expresses the support. I, I'm not aware that I was invited, but it's Senator Manchin. Let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. If I can finish. Go ahead, real quick. So when Senator Manchin goes, he gets invited, he shows up, he supports something, and then he turns around does the other thing. Okay. That's exactly Let's what he does on, on Planned Let's Parenthood move on. Let's funding, move on. Let's move on. Second Senator Amendment Manchin, I'm going to move on. Senator Manchin, you and Republican Senator Susan Collins were the last two senators to announce right. your votes whether to confirm Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Senator Collins announced on the Senate floor at exactly 3.50 p.m that she would vote to confirm, becoming the 50th vote. And your vote um, was announced on Twitter at 3.54 p.m., four minutes later, after confirmation was already assured because Vice President Pence would have broken a tie. Why, Senator, did you wait until the very last minute to announce your support? And why shouldn't the people of West Virginia believe that you did that out of political expediency? First of all, I'm the only Democrat that voted for Judge Kavanaugh. People were announcing immediately, uh, people such as... Uh, Attorney General uh, Patrick Morsey here was announcing immediately within 10 minutes. The job that we do as senator is basic advising consent. We went through every one of his cases, 300 cases he had experience. He had basically uh, a repertoire as far as his whole resume was great as far as his education. Uh, his standing in the community, everything looked good. He came in for a two-hour confrontation with me. We went through all of his cases. And then after that, we wait for the judiciary hearing. How in the world can you announce the first 10 minutes or the first day that a person is nominated without doing your job? And then what we did is that uh, announcement came out, the accusations came out. I was the first to ask for an FBI investigation. I went through every word of the FBI investigation. We didn't finish it until 1030 that morning in the secured skiff and went up and basically voted. It, the vote is the vote. Nothing's going to change. Why were you the very last vote? I wasn't the last vote, Hoppy. My goodness, I think I was 49th or 50th or 51, something in there. I wasn't the last vote. Okay, Patrick, you vote basically in order of your, when you're sitting in your seat, in order of your... Well, this is another example of how Senator Manchin says one thing, West Virginia does another in Washington. The fact is that he took a, a powder in the bathroom and left, and then he allowed Maine to decide West Virginia's vote. But there's a bigger issue at stake here, Hoppy. I support President Trump. I support Gorsuch. I support Kavanaugh and the judicial picks he's made. If Senator Manchin had his way, Senator Manchin would have had Hillary Clinton as president. We would have no Kavanaugh. We would have no Gorsuch. Senator Manchin supported Barack Obama's judicial picks 95% of the time. Okay. That's a, being a dishonest Hoppy, Washington liberal. That's I not what West Virginia needs. Trump's, I All right, supported President Trump's. Uh, uh, nominations more than anybody as far as but you the supported you supported Hillary Clinton in, in the in the uh, 2016 I'm going to get sure. to that actually it's a question coming up but also, uh, Morsi, Attorney, Gen also, Attorney General yeah. Morsi despite promises to the contrary the Republican tax plan you supported has sent the deficit skyrocketing 779 billion dollars for the past fiscal year with the return of one trillion dollars in deficits on the horizon the national debt's about 22 trillion dollars now president trump is proposing another round of tax cuts which would balloon that number even more how is any of this fiscally responsible well first of all i want to say i strongly support the trump tax cuts because they're good for west virginia doubling the standard deduction, lowering of the rates. These opportunity zones that are going to attract capital help the most impoverished people of our state. President Trump is dead right, and you see our economy soaring through the tax cuts and through the regulatory relief. Once again, none of that would happen if Senator Manchin had his way and Hillary Clinton were president. So that's a huge difference between the two of us. Hillary Clinton's view would have been hiking our taxes, more war on coal, more regulations West Virginia wouldn't have its comeback if Senator Manchin had his way and Hillary Clinton were in office. 
My position is very different. We need to stimulate our economy. We need to grow jobs in West Virginia. And you do that through President Trump's pro-growth policies. I'm a big backer. One of the reasons why President Trump is coming back tomorrow is he's made it clear I would have voted for the Trump tax cuts. Senator Manchin said no to that. And that's because he's part of the Schumer, Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Washington liberal team that doesn't look out for West Virginia. We're going to do better when I'm in the U.S. Senate because we need those pro-jobs policies that can help lift our economy up further. Let's get a rebuttal. I said no because I'm trying to protect West Virginia. Again, when they repealed the mandate, that's a death sentence for the 800,000 West Virginians with pre-existing condition. He seems to be very pleased about it now. He'll talk about it. Also, it's the first time in the history of the United States that we've ever talked about taxes, tax reforms, or any type of tax adjustment. And at the end of the day, we assume we'd have more debt. One and a half trillion dollars by the CBO. Never happened before. We have spiraling debt now quicker than ever before. Inflation will be going up. Interest rates are going up. And there's going to be a cost to the citizens. But on top of that, what we're doing to our children, we've written checks our children will never cash. It's a sin what we've done to them. And we gave him four plans, the president, four plans, that we right. had 15 Democrats to make it bipartisan. All right, Mitch go, McConnell was intended to make it a partisan issue. Let's continue on taxes. You said one of the reasons you voted against, as you just said, uh, because those tax cuts uh, were not permanent for the middle class uh, families. House Republicans are pushing forward legislation to make those tax cuts permanent. Absolutely. If you get a chance, would you vote for that middle class tax cut? And if you do support it, wouldn't that add to the debt as well? Absolutely, I would vote for would it. Vote but they need to adjust the basically, they need to adjust the corporate tax from 21 to 25. It should have never gone. So you want to raise the corporate tax? It needs to go back to 25 and take all the uh, all the exemptions off from all his wealthy friends. All his wealthy friends from the lobbying industry that's benefited from this. We try to cl close the loopholes. Carried interest is one of the most egregious things ever done to the wealthiest people on Wall Street. They won't remove any of that. He would never vote for that. And we have to make sure that our children are treated fair. It should have been a tax cut for the middle class, a permanent tax cut. When Mitch McConnell got done with it and Paul Ryan got done with it, basically the middle class, the average working person, got very little, if nothing, except a big debt. All right, there's a clear difference between you two, so let's but, get a rebuttal. On well, this. I think Senator Manchin knows that he's saying it now because it's an election season. But President Trump, when he comes in tomorrow for the rally, he's going to be talking about the Trump tax cuts, what it's doing for West Virginia. It's good policy. The fact remains, Senator Manchin always votes against West Virginia when his vote is needed. He would have to wait. He has to get Chuck Schumer's permission before he votes. That's not the leadership we need from West Virginia. The fact is that Senator Manchin offered to work with the president. He didn't follow through because you can't trust him. No one in West Virginia, regardless of the political parties and regardless of the issue, we saw it in Kavanaugh because he not right. only uh, disowned right. West right. Virginians, right. he actually right. me, didn't live up okay, to his word. Okay, that's time. Uh, Attorney General Marcy, Republican leaders in Congress, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, are talking again about changes to entitlement programs sure. uh, and also Social Security as a way to get the debt under control. And we're talking about the debt. That would include tough decisions such as possibly raising the retirement age or raising the cap on the amount that's taxed for Social Security. Do you agree that Social Security and Medicare need to be reformed? And, and if so, can you give me at least one specific concrete thing yeah. that would be done, that could be done, that would get these entitlements under control? Well, I want to say and tell all the seniors that are out there that the Social Security program and the Medicare program, these are promises that are made. When a senior enrolls, we have to make sure that we fulfill the trust of the people that have paid into these programs. So we are absolutely not going to touch and hit anyone uh, who's on these programs. We have to protect those people. I've been very clear about that. We also have to make sure, Hoppy, that we go after the waste, fraud, and abuse that's in the program. I have taken on this disability fraud issue in West Virginia. I can remember no one before I became attorney general was willing to do it. Senator Manchin said no. Uh, other people in office said no. They wouldn't go after disability fraud. I want to make sure that we protect the resources for those who need it most. When you crack down on disability fraud, on Medicare fraud, you can actually preserve the benefit for future generations. Are, That's the approach are, we need to take. Are you suggesting that just dealing with fraud is enough to bring Social Security and Medicare into fiscal alignment? I am saying that we are not going to harm seniors, and I want to be very clear about that. We have to get control of our reckless budget situation. Now, that's part of the big spending ways of Washington. Senator Manchin repeatedly votes for one spending bill after another. Big part of the problem, the mess in Washington, and Schumer and Hillary were a big part of that. 
is that they want to spend money we don't have. Right. We actually have to be more responsible with the dollars that we're spending. Protect West Virginia. Let's get a rebuttal from okay, First of all, he's saying that basically he wants to protect Social Security. When he was running for Congress, he got 9 percent of the vote in the primary for Congress in New Jersey. One of his key things was privatize uh, Social Security. Privatizing Social Security at 70 years of age and people playing the market is Russian roulette. He knows that doesn't work, and he knows he's putting them in danger. And this is what we're fighting against. People like Patrick Morrissey wanting to play with people's income and people's lifeblood. Uh, the other thing is I've worked with James Langford, a uh, Republican uh, from Oklahoma, and, and basically disability, total disability. Anybody that has total disability in West Virginia that basically is younger well, than retirement age of 62, every three years should be reviewed. Well, I, okay. All right. These let me types go, of things we go, talked go, about. Senator Manchin, a question for you. You yes. campaigned as someone you believe West Virginia is no in trust. In the 2016 presidential race, you supported and campaigned for Hillary Clinton, who famously said, I'm the only candidate who has a policy about how to bring economic opportunity using clean, renewable energy as the key into coal country because we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. After she said that, why did you continue to support her? I called her immediately and said I wasn't going to support you. She said, I want to come to West Virginia. I made a tr tremendous mistake. I said, what you said is not going to be misconstrued. You were very clear. She said, I need to explain the whole intent of what I said. I said, I think that's number, another mistake coming to West Virginia. She came, went down into the coal fields. I went down also. She looked at me afterwards and she says, my goodness, I didn't know it was this bad. I said, I was telling you how bad it was. I don't know why you said what you said. You tried to explain it. People aren't going to accept it because they're hurt. She says, what can I do? I said, I can tell you exactly what needs to be done in southern West Virginia. King Cole Highway has to be built. Coalfields Expressway has to be built. Broadband, high-speed connectivity, and cell service. And the final thing we need, Hillary, is we need to have a hydroelectric dam in the mined-out areas in southern West Virginia to diversify the economy and take the revenue from the hydroelectric dam, share it with the counties down south. That will help them stabilize because they've been hurt. She looked at me and she said, Joe, if I become president, I'm sending my husband, Bill. You two make that happen. Now, I could have said, sorry, Hillary, nice offer, but I can't take it. It might hurt me politically. Am I there for me or am I there for helping West Virginia, especially southern West Virginia, which was devastated? I made a decision to do my job and help my state. Patrick. You know, Hoppy, I think this shows one of the big differences between my campaign and Senator Manchin. The fact is he did double down in his support for Hillary Clinton, even after she made clear she was going to put a lot of coal miners out of work. Hillary Clinton was bad for West Virginia. We suffered for eight years under the Barack Obama administration. Senator Manchin strongly supported Barack Obama when he's running for president. I chose a different path. I support President Trump and has actually have worked with him to begin to see that comeback in the coal fields. On the issue of coal, let's be clear. I stood up and fought for coal miners, took the case off the U.S. Supreme Court and beat Barack Obama. Meanwhile, he's aiding and abetting Hillary Clinton. That's why he's a dishonest Washington liberal, All because right. he tries to protect, say he's going to protect coal, me, okay. but his policies and support <laughs> on say that, otherwise. Uh, Attorney, General, Attorney General Morrissey, two-part question. There are at least 12 million people in this country illegally. Do you support or oppose a pathway to legal status or citizenship for them, number one? And number two, do you support the president's proposal to send up to 15,000 troops to the border in anticipation of that migrant caravan? Let's start with the last part first. Do you support that 15,000 troop movement to the border? And do you have a view on a pathway yeah. to citizenship if you support that for those okay. illegals? First of all, I think the president is right to not only send the troops, but to clamp down on open borders policy. What you're seeing with this caravan is a direct product of all the radical proposals by his teammate, Senator Chuck Schumer, Feinstein, Hillary Clinton, all the radicals, because they encourage open borders, leading to amnesty, sanctuary cities. Senator Manchin actually supported providing free health care to illegal immigrants. It's unbelievable. It is and unbelievable. He, he talks about doing that and actually what we need to do instead, we need to clamp down the borders. President Trump has been absolutely right on this. I think that we need real reforms in our immigration system. We need to end this chain migration that people are talking about and have merit-based immigration. No amnesty, Hoppy. Uh, I oppose to that. And I don't think we should reward people with citizenship if they come into the country illegally. Just a, a point on that. So what do you do with the 12 million people who are here illegally now? Look, we're a compassionate society. We're not, no one's talking about throwing people out of the country. A pathway to citizenship or we're a pathway to legal status? We're talking about you know, having a system that is not going to be throwing people out on the streets. But I will say this. The policies of Senator Manchin, along with Dianne Feist, Feinstein, do you know what they did this past year? They literally tried to put the catch and release proposal in place. Oh you know what that would do, Hoppy? But, well, hang on. 
that would actually prohibit a law enforcement officer from actually oh, yeah, arresting yeah, you're someone get, you're for human response. trafficking, for drug trafficking right. within 100 Let's miles get, of a border or port of entry. First. That's the Senator right, Manchin. All right, Senator Manchin, give us a quick rebuttal on that. Very Go clear. Ahead. Give me some time here, Hoppy, because I'm trying to be nice, and I want to be a West Virginian, and I want to be civil, not call him a liar or dishonest, okay? But these things are so far from the reality, it's unbelievable. I've been against sanctuary cities. I've clamped down. I don't think illegals should come and be able to come here and set up shop. I really don't. I think that we should do everything we can to secure the borders. We had a 2013 piece of legislation, bipartisan, which I know that Patrick Morsi would have a hard time understanding bipartisanship, working with both sides, people with knowledge that live on the border. John McCain leading the charge. Hoppy, what we ended up with, let me explain to you, what we end up with is a piece of legislation that spent $46 billion, almost well, twice as much as the president's asked let, for, let and ask nothing the, could be done to a pathway unless the borders were secure. I know, and that's actually my next question, okay. so let's go there. This is relevant because that you're talking about the Senate Immigration Bill of 2013, right. I believe. That bill said uh, if you had 700 miles of fencing, if you had 38,000 Border Patrol agents deployed in the E-Verify system, that undocumented people in this country illegally could apply to become permanent residents. Why do you believe that people who've entered this country illegally should be allowed to stay with essentially all the rights and privileges of a citizen, while up to four million immigrants who follow the rules and are trying to come here legally First face that, caps and long waits? Poppy, that piece of legislation basically did one thing and one thing importantly first, it secured the borders. $46 billion before you did anything had to secure the borders. That was written by Bob Corker and John Hoven, two Republicans, and that was as tough as it's ever been. And we were for that. The thing it says, if you're an illegal and you came here, you go to the courthouse, you sign in, you committed a crime, you pay a fine, you get in the back of the line. If you have committed any crimes while you were here, you're deported out of here. The borders would be secured so you couldn't come back. Also, it took 13 years. You were in the back of the line. 13 years, you had to learn English. You had to basically have a job and pay taxes. If you committed any crime while you were here during that 13 years, you're deported out of here. And basically, it was the toughest piece of legislation. I respected the Republicans and the Democrats who know best. John McCain leading the charge, an American patriot. Arizona being right at the, at the ground zero knew exactly what to do. We have to have walls at least seven to 900 miles. We have to use all of the technology. We have to secure the ports. We have to, Hoppy, basically secure basically the mail coming in with all the scanning. So much needs to be done. And all that right. bill did it, and they basically said that was amnesty. All right, I'm going to give Patrick a chance Hoppy, to respond here. There are clear differences on the issue of immigration and open borders. I stand with President Trump. He's coming in tomorrow. He's going to talk about immigration issues. I applaud that. Senator Manchin, what you just heard is all this dishonest Washington liberal double talk. Senator be Manchin nice, support no, nice. health care for illegal immigrants. That's outrageous with all the budget problems that we have. Number two, we know that he supported open borders and we know that he's on, been on both sides of the border wall. He's quoted as saying that. Senator Manchin's policies actually will exacerbate the drug yeah. epidemic and here's, drug trafficking here's in West what Virginia. We're gonna do. Here's what we're going to do because we're short on time. We have to get to closing <laughs> statements. I'm going to break format a little bit, guys, and I'm going to ask each of you the same question and give you one minute sure. uh, to respond. Patrick, I'll start with you. Sure. President Trump has called for an end to birthright citizenship. By the way, I know you both, Patrick, Joe, so Please no preference on that, okay? Happy. President Trump has called for an end to birthright citizenship, which historically has been guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. Do you believe, Attorney General Morrissey, the 14th Amendment means that if you're born in this country, you're automatically a citizen? Or do you believe, as President Trump said, that that's not so, and that can be changed with an executive order or an act of Congress? Well, Hoppy, first I want to be clear. I think the president is right to look at the birthright lottery that's been going on, that this is something that can be really abused. Now, we haven't seen the president's executive order yet. I want to look at that, and I want to study it to make sure that we're handling that the right way, whether it requires a constitutional amendment or not. I'm going to do that. But let's be clear about this. Senator Manchin, we know, has supported all these open borders policies. And you look at that caravan and what's going on, that's a direct result of the policies of Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Senator Manchin. Senator Manchin He's playing for the wrong Senator team. Senator Manchin, do you believe the 14th Amendment believes if you're born in this country, you're automatically First a citizen? First of all, here's the leading officer as far as uh, legal officer for the state of West Virginia, not understanding that the Constitution basically can only be changed by the legislature putting it on an amendment for the people to ratify. I think it's worthy of looking at it. I think the president needs to say what he intends to do. Ask the legislature to basically put the bill up See if it gets the vote to go on. 
I think there's a lot can be done and a lot can be controlled, but he cannot do it by an executive order. The time has gone by very quickly, gentlemen. Let's get to the closing. Senator Manchin, you go first on your closing, and you have two minutes. Yeah. All yours. Hoppy, first of all, I think this has been a, a very good op, uh, di dialogue. I think you've seen the differences that we have between us. Um, I, I just wanted to say that, that I think front, finally the people are able to see the differences between uh, Patrick Morsi and myself, uh, who they want to represent them in the Senate. The difference is very clear. Here's a person who basically has made a living lobbying in the swamp in West Virginia, uh, in Washington, and basically made a, a living sending pills and basically representing people that have made us sick. Uh, he got rich and West Virginia got sick. He's also uh, a pre-existing condition. I can't even believe it. You can't be a West Virginian understanding that 800,000 people are going to be affected in a life or death matter. And then on top of that, he gives unwavering support, unwavering support to Mitch McConnell. To Mitch McConnell basically has fought the miners of getting their pension and health care for three years. And he, we finally jammed him and got the health care and now the pensions. He's fighting us again. And on top of that, he wants to cut Social Security and Medicare, which is what he's intended to do with legislation he's done and worked on and when he ran for Congress. I was raised and born in Farmington, West Virginia, lived here all of my life. People know me. They talk about trust. I have been in many offices because of the trust of the people. I've done everything I can to operate under that uh, trust. And when I was governor, we basically put our, our state in better shape than ever before. My grandma, Mama Kay, raised in Farmington, she took care of everybody. She was a one-woman social worker. My grandfather taught me fiscal responsibility. I applied that when I became governor. I have done everything I can to make sure that every decision I make is going to help West Virginia, every problem that we have. I haven't looked at Democrats and Republicans as a tribe. I looked at them as people who can get together, bring different ideas, and fix our problems. Right now, it's become tribal. He's been a yes man. He wants to be a yes man. He will continue to. I trust the people of West Virginia. I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. I would love to have the opportunity to be able to continue to represent you to the best of my ability. I only work for you and nobody else. Senator Manchin, thank you. Attorney General Morrissey. Well, Hoppy, first of all, thank you very much for having the format tonight. Finally, people get a chance to see the major differences between the candidates. I want to look at the voters tonight and make sure that people know those differences. I think it's critical that there are two different ways that we can go. Senator Manchin, when he had a choice in 2016, decided that he was going to support Hillary Clinton for president. And unfortunately, Senator Manchin, over the last number of years, has grown custom to the ways of Washington, being a dishonest Washington liberal. When you look at all the policy positions that Senator Manchin says he supports, the fact is that if Hillary Clinton were president, none of those would be possible. We couldn't have Judge Gorsuch. We couldn't have Judge Kavanaugh. We would have abortion on demand because we'd have the most radical pro-abortion president in history. Second Amendment would be under vicious assault. You look at our coal miners. I fought very hard for our coal miners. Senator Manchin abandoned them when he supported Hillary, doubled down on his support. That's not the approach. Those aren't West Virginia conservative values. In Patrick Morris, you get someone different. I love the state of West Virginia, and I don't have... New Jersey values like Senator Manchin. He votes like a senator from New Jersey and from Washington. That's very different from a conservative fighter for President Trump. I'm going to work with this president to cut taxes, to reduce regulations on the hardworking job creators of our state. We're going to tackle this opiate epidemic. We're going to have affordable, high-quality health care that actually protects people with pre-existing conditions. And we're going to make sure that we drain that swamp. I support term limits, and I want to make sure that West Virginia gets the conservative leadership it deserves. The reality is, when you hear from me, you can count on what I say. Unfortunately, Senator Manchin, you can't trust anything he says. Well, listen, thank you both. We've had a spirited discussion here tonight, and I certainly appreciate you both being here and having this debate, and thanks for allowing me to interrupt at times. And let's all just shake hands, shall yeah. we, at the end? Thank you all both. Right. So thank you, Attorney General Morrissey, and thank you, Senator Manchin, and uh, be safe on the campaign trail, mm -hmm. and uh, good luck as this election approaches on thank November you. 6th. I want to thank all West Virginians for tuning in this evening. I also want to thank the West Virginia Broadcasters Association. I want to thank AT&T for their sponsorship of this and thank our producer, Dan Lohman, for putting together this broadcast this evening. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.